We're joined by Dr. Karen DeSalvo from the University of Texas Dell Medical School, and you're going to be moderating the session on Monday. Is an ounce of prevention worth a pound of cure? Can you tell us a little bit about this session and what the audience is expected to learn? Oh, well, thank you. I'm so excited about this session because we have on the panel a wide array of perspectives on how to define prevention and how to decide if there's value added and how to kind of get it into the common culture of the U.S. Uh, we're going to be uh, joined by uh, Dr. Aaron Carroll, a pediatrician who does a lot of writing in the New York Times and has his own blog post. Uh, always controversial figure, uh, raising uh, questions and, and challenging our thinking. Um, we're going to be joined by Dr. Kara Odom Walker, who is the Secretary of Health in the state of Delaware, very experienced public health professional, to give us that view on what it's like at the state level. Dr. Nadine uh, Gracia, who I had the chance to work with at HHS when I was in the uh, Obama administration. I know her to be a thoughtful person who is deep in the space of health equity uh, as well as public health. And then finally, by a health economist, uh, Dr. Stuart Butler who has a long track record of being an expert in healthcare policy and has turned his brilliant mind on thinking about public health policy and how we can do a better job of trying to put value on prevention. So it stands to be a really interesting conversation as we think about moving away from kind of a medical model of prevention to a more public health model. And how can we make a better case for prevention? You know, this is the, um, the American way is to always try to put a dollar value on something. And for the last 10 years in particular, we've been thinking a lot about prevention as a medical solution. How can we um, leverage benefits from insurance to make sure people are getting their vaccines and their mammograms and their colonoscopies? These are very important, um, but very individual level focus on how to drive prevention. The, the trend that is emerging, thank goodness, as a public health person I'm excited about is thinking of systems and policy um, and environmental ways that we can drive communities to embrace prevention, not just medical interventions, but things like avoidance of smoking or having more walkable communities, better public education, so that everyone has uh, an equal opportunity to, to achieve equity and to, to achieve health. This is a different way of valuing. It's not um, putting a price value of a medical intervention on a very clear outcome like lower hospitalization, but it stretches us to think about how do we drive value for a community and maybe the outcomes aren't about money or about the healthcare system, but really about things like third grade reading level or quality of life. And APHA has the challenge of creating the healthiest nation in one generation. What are the steps to get there? Well, first of all, I just want to applaud APHA for that vision because getting the entire public health community and then uh, in bringing others into this, whether they're medical or academic or in the public policy sphere, to get focused on a goal that is achievable but is going to require many sectors to work together, not only to address things like prevention in the space of vaccines and smoking cessation uh, for chronic disease as well, but then really broadly, what are these social drivers or the social determinants of health that require multi-sectoral partnerships, people coming to the table together to make systems level change at the community level. This um, notion of creating a healthy generation means not just individual focused efforts, but really creating healthy communities. And APHA's leadership in this, to really stand up and call for a vision, call the question and bring parties to the table is an, honestly a really important first step to begin to drive action. We're seeing great examples at the community level of communities driving change. I, I'm in Texas and a great example there is the state of Texas just uh, made a decision to, to adopt Tobacco 21, which is a wonderful example of how the public and private sector come together and make a decision that they don't want kids to have access to tobacco before the age of 21 because we know that if you can avoid that people don't start smoking later it's a leading cause of death and an important strategy in prevention but that kind of statewide approach where everyone decided that we want to do better by the next generation is exactly the kind of systems level change that APHA and others want to start seeing across the country. Now, another big issue that APHA is taking on is violence and that's going to be a topic that's talked about next year. What can we do to better prevent violence and also motivate policymakers to look at evidence-based solutions and approaches? Well, you know, when I was health commissioner in New Orleans, this was a, a top three priority for us. 
and it was brought forward to us by the community who um, when we asked them what were their challenges, uh, community violence, interpersonal violence, big priorities. And so we took a public health approach. Uh, it, it, um, there are good evidence-based models uh, like Cure Violence based out of Chicago that show us that, that violence is contagion. And if we can interrupt it using some of the same strategies we've used in the past for tuberculosis as an example, we can really uh, stall out the spread of violence and do that not only for individuals but at the community level. Violence is a public health challenge, and public health community has known and acted in that in ways in the past, but this focus on it going forward I think is increasingly essential because much of the way the country has tried to tackle violence has been tactical. Let's uh, arrest our way out of it or imprison our way out of it, and quite frankly there are longer term strategies that relate to building community health and relationship, addressing educational and employment opportunities, and good models around the country of public health approaches to violence that I hope will get lifted up in next year's meeting and we can begin to really spread and scale those successes. Well, we want to thank you so much for your involvement here at APHA and for sharing that valuable information with us today. Thank you.